We begin tonight with Hogan Gidley, former White House Deputy Press Secretary in the Trump administration, and Franco Ornez, White House correspondent for NPR. Gentlemen, good to see you. Thank you. Hogan, we can stipulate that things work, but is Donald Trump really want America to be sitting around talking about Kamala Harris's ethnic heritage and his feelings about it? What he wants to, the people to talk about, not only is just her radical agenda, but that she is a liar and that she is a phony. And what he did last night, look, there are a lot of times when I'm around Donald Trump and he says something, I think to myself, whoa, I don't know if I'd have done that. And then I realized he was actually ahead of the curve and knew what was going to happen. He wagged the dog. He moved the media where he wanted him to go. And then subsequently, what you find out on social media is that there were plenty of times that Kamala Harris was touted by the media as being the first Indian to hold a, a particular office. She herself went on television, uh, cooked with many. So this Taylor is a conversation that Donald Trump wants. Right. But what I'm saying is it goes back to the broader message, which is she is a phony and will do anything and say anything to get elected, up to and including what race she decides to identify with at any given time. And when Vivek Ramaswamy comes out and says she talked about being an Indian just to get ahead, we had black uh, people okay. against Kamala Harris so on, Franklin, on the internet is... saying the same thing, saying, wait a minute, she's not really black, I'm confused. That's the conversation now, and it's shifted. To that point, Franco, the, the media loves this conversation when it involves Donald Trump and race because they think calling him a racist and somehow changes that. Is having the conversation shift a good thing for Donald Trump? I mean, I don't know if I would totally agree with those points. I mean, I definitely agree with you that it changed the conversation. He was having, uh, you know, the momentum that he had post-debate with Biden, post-convention, uh, you know, Harris's announcement. It was really in Harris's. really changed the conversation. I agree with you that it changed that conversation. That said, Trump is also looking at suburban women voters. Um, and I don't know that this conversation, these comments, these questions about race and identity help him there. I do think it changes the conversation, but I think it, it I'm not sure he's loving the idea of this being a, so much of a talker. Well, by the way, you are in, I don't know if you would say good company or not, but you are in a lot of company when you say that. Bill O'Reilly, um, Brian Kilmeade on Fox News, and Vivek Ramaswamy all echoed what you said. Take a listen. Donald Trump blew it, and the happiest person in the country tonight is Kamala Harris, because she's sitting there cackling. Look at this. Yeah, look at this. Look at Trump. He's just alienated millions of black voters. He did crap the bed today. The only question is whether he's going to roll around in it or get up and change his sheets. I also don't think that it's a, it's a winning issue to bring up Kamala Harris, uh, Indian, black. It doesn't matter. I do believe that we need a bit of a reset in this campaign, if we're being honest and being clear-eyed. Right, so, Hogan, you're saying all those guys are wrong. No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm trying to point out, they're missing the broader message of what that comment was meant to do, which was erode her credibility. Well, if they're missing the broader a, message, didn't she, Donald Trump screw up in delivering the message? No, I'm saying what he's doing is trying to reset the conversation about her being a fake and a phony. And he did so by pointing to the very core of her essence and her being, which is she goes around on one hand, some days talking about her, uh, that she's black, some days she says she's Indian. So he's trying to kind of go back to the core, which is she's a phony. And on top of that, she's radical, right? That's what he wants to be talking about. Now, we can debate whether or not the way he did that is the way that he should have done it. But the conversation will ultimately, between now and the, the election, obviously shift to the issues and the, and the, and the policy. Well, okay, so let me see if I can put a finer point on this, right? He wants the conversation to be, she was for open borders, now she says she wants to secure the border. She was for defund the police, now she says she's a prosecutor. He wants to, he wants to compare and contrast those. But frankly, at this point, I, I, there is this group of journalists who seem every time to take this bait, right? They, they play <laughs> into Donald Trump's hand. Is there no recognition among the White House press corps and, and the broader press corps that they're just sort of like crawling Donald Trump along like a fish on a, on a lure? I mean, I think they're covering, I think I am a member of the White House press corps. I think we're covering the news. I think we're covering it fairly. And I do think, obviously, Trump has very, very skilled. Hogan and I talk about this a lot. Hogan, uh, pardon me, Trump knows how to generate headlines. He knows how to drive a narrative. Is there some hook in the mouth there? Perhaps. But I would also argue uh, that in that message, some of what Trump was trying to make, the case that he was trying to make, 
to the NABJ, uh, some of it was lost or wasn't talked about as much. He made an economic argument. He talked about illegal immigrants uh, perhaps taking jobs from black Americans. We are talking now, we're talking today about this identity, Harris's identity. Thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.